<coughs> hey everybody welcome to thursday night it is august 10th and let me get over to comments so whoever gets here first i don't see any eyeballs yet but whoever gets here first just let me know uh that sound is good i think it is i've only got the the ipad on the mute so We'll see. I did hop on like right at eight. So let's just give everybody a minute or so to hop on. I'm starting to see some eyeballs. So yeah, whoever's here first, just let me know. Sound is good. Um, and I did move my camera down uh, a little bit tonight. So we'll see if that, if that helps anything. Like I, I felt, I kind of felt like it was a little too far up anyway. Hey Karen. So you can hear me. I'm assuming that's good. Hey Penny. All right, cool. Hey, Sue. Good. Awesome. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for hanging out tonight for a little bit. Um, I have been dying to use this bird's eye view set because it is so cute. Hey, Julie. Now, as I'm looking at it and, you know, I cut all my stuff, sketched out all my stuff for tonight, and I could have sworn there was a little scarf in here. There's not. So we're going to have to make do. Um, but the rest of it, the birds are just too cute. And it's the eyeglasses, I think, that get me, right? They're just adorable. Um, so just a couple of reminders, and then we're going to jump into it. Hey, Marlene. Hey, Gail. And Sean. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so reminders about the kit sale. So this is the kit, kits collection, the things that are not the paper pumpkins, the one that they still come out with every month. They come out, they seem to come out with a new one. Hey, Di. Um, those are on sale up to 30% off through the end of August. All right. So some are 20%, some are 30%, some are, you know, hit or miss. Hey, Rose. Ooh, you just got, you fussed, you got about 200 pieces, 200 pieces of what? Of owls? Ooh, or something else. I'm interested. Um, so yeah, kit sale that is through the end of August. All right. I ordered, uh, one at the like August 2nd or something and shipping is still like not great. I'm still waiting for it. So I thought it was going to be here tomorrow. Now it looks like it's not going to be here till Tuesday. I don't understand that. Like it's already in shipping. So we'll see. Um, other reminder, paper share. If you want to get in on that, I'm pretty sure I put the description, the link to the Google form in the description of the video, but I'll have to go back and double check. It's definitely on my blog and on my, um, Facebook page. So check there if you want to get in on it. Uh, I think it's $47. There's 13 packs this time. And then the freebie is a bonus pack. Um, it's one of the foil ones, joyful maybe. And it, it's a one-sided, like it's all foily. Um, but we'll get that. And then if you need shipping, it's an extra nine. Uh, if it costs less than that, I'll refund. If if it's more than that, that's on me. And then one more thing. I had put in my email that I sent last week that I was going to have a one horse open sleigh card class and it was going to be all, you know, private video online. Um, that's, I don't have time for that. Like it takes me a lot more time to do a pre-recorded video and then, you know, I got to do edits and, you know, all that versus doing a live um, and things have just changed as far as time in the last couple of weeks. And now both my pool teams made playoffs. So that's good. That's good news. But now like I have to spend like all Sunday night up there and then possibly two more weekends in September. So one horse open sleigh, definitely still doing card class um, because I already have them designed and I think it's cool. I did them all five by seven, which I think is a good size for, you know, writing a lot of messages. Although I don't personally write a lot of messages, <laughs> but I think you may like that. All right. <laughs> Die. I never did either. So I sent him an email and I'm going to have to try again tomorrow. Stampin' Up! has been like overwhelmed this week with, you know, phone calls. I think it's probably been the last two weeks ever since they started that switch over for demos. Anywho. Um, so yeah, one horse slate that'll be coming. Just stay tuned for details. All right, let's get down to tonight. Um, we're doing, ah, so cute, bird's eye view. So see, it's the glasses. They're just too cute. I love them and they're good sized birds. So I wanted to do like a couple of 
trying to think, is there any technique? There is definitely an interesting fun fold card, and then we're going to make a box at the end. Um, but, ooh, Penny, five by seven makes you feel British. <laughs> That's, I didn't even know that was a thing. You're funny. Uh, all right, so I may use the go-to greetings and the layering leaves, the greetings from there. I haven't quite decided on that part. Uh, but let's do, let's get to first. Now, I did go ahead and stamp all of my birds that I'm going to use. This is on basic white thick, and I stamped it in the VersaFine, which takes a while to dry. So that's why I stamped it ahead of time, at least for that part. Um, and then I just have to figure out which ones I'm going to use and stamp these eyeglasses on them. Oh, my God. They're so cute. I can't stand it. All right. But we are mostly, we're going to do three two note cards, and then one special card, and then a box that will hold all of it. All right, so we're gonna start with first, the note cards come in like packs of 20. So Whisper, Whisper White, Basic White, or Very Vanilla, or Craft. I personally don't like the Craft ones that much as far as stamping on them. If you want to you know, decorate them, like add layers and add pieces that are stamped. That's good. But stamping on them, the craft paper is just kind of crummy, I think. it's It bleeds a lot and it's not sturdy like this. So it's kind of floppy. Don't care for it. Um, plus, I think the box that it comes in, so the crumb cake is an extra maybe $2 or something in the catalog. And it comes with a box that you can put all your stuff in. Well, the box isn't all that great, especially not for $2. So, eh, they're kind of dead to me. Julie, you're cute too. <laughs> so, I am going to use um, one set. So, I'm going to use the envelope in the first project, and then we're going to use the card in the second one. So, we'll put that away. Um, so, we've got our, now the note cards are three and a half by five. Um, I think they call that an A4 size. But it's a, it's a good enough size for, you know, making, sending a message. So we're going to start with, now you would think, oh, is that Cranberry Crisp? Boo. Uh, it would be if I had bought new designer paper. I thought I had the neutrals in the new colors and or in the regals, and I don't. So this is actually Mary Merlot, and I need this for the last project. Um, so we're using Mary Merlot because I have a couple sheets left. Just imagine that this is cherry cobbler, okay? Rose, you think the crumb cake is more fibrous and not polished like the white, yeah, and the vanilla. You're absolutely right. It is more fibrous, and it's definitely more, um, like, it just absorbs it more, and it, it bleeds. Like, it doesn't stamp nice. Definitely better for layering and maybe making something out of, but not stampable. All right, so... Um, our cherry cobbler slash Mary Merlot. <coughs> this is seven by five. And then we score it in half at three and a half. <clears throat> so this will be our three and a half by five card. Now, when you get the set, sometimes the cards are tight, a tight fit in here. So, so far, this one is, it's fitting quite nicely. Um, and I'm not going to do a whole bunch of layering anyway. We are going to, this is in for the inside. So this is three and a quarter by four and three quarters. <clears throat> mm. And I am trying to use up my fast views that I found. Now this one's going to be a vertical card. And you shall see why in a minute. All right. So we've got that. Here's that. I'm actually going to open it back up. So what I want to do is use this cute book stamp and make a stack of books and I'm going to make like a background. And actually I want to do a stack here and then we're going to punch out. Let's just punch this. This is that decorative punch. It's kind of like swirly. We're going to punch this out of crushed curry. So we're going to have that and then a two inch circle that is punched and embossed with the exposed brick folder. We're going to have that, and then we're going to have our bird. So on this side, I want to stamp our stack of books. And we're going to do some masking, which I already cut my mask. And 
I had glue on it. So let's see, where did it end up? Oh, here we go. Stuck to my bottle cap. So I just stamped this on a post-it note and then I put um, two-way glue pen on the back. Yeah, I love the fall colors, Amy. And this, yeah, Mary Merlot or Cherry Cobbler, we're calling it Cherry Cobbler, that'll go. And actually I am gonna use Cherry Cobbler ink. So I want the stack of books I want the tippy top one to be like this top. So I'm actually going to stop at the, start at the top of my page and work my way down. <clears throat> and I may have to add, um, I stamped this earlier and it wasn't wanting to stamp nice in the middle. So I'm going to bring in my piece of foam here. So let's do, and I'm just eyeballing this. Oh, that looks good. So I can see that's wet. I want to let it dry for just a minute, but we're just going to put this down and they don't have to line up perfectly. Do that. Pull up our mask, move it down. And you can see I got a little whoopsie there. We're just going to cover that up. So don't rush it. There's no need. Man, this juicy, this ink pad is really juicy. I can really see that it's staying moist. So can you guys, do you think it's better? Because I moved the camera down about that much, maybe about three inches. I am hoping that it's a clearer picture for you guys. I think it is, but I can't really tell. And frankly, when I go back and watch these later, if I have to, sometimes I'm disappointed in the quality. Sometimes it looks okay, but then other times it's like, what's going on? And I think that's more like when the weather's bad because this stream yard, it's over the Wi-Fi. All right. And now we're getting to the end. We're almost here. Maybe two more. But so cute to make this stack of books. Yeah, we'll do one more. See, I'm picking up some ink on that glue because this is really staying wet for a little bit. Oh, I love it. And if you wanted to take the time and some nerdery and go in and write some names of books, you could do that. That would be cute. All right. Yeah. Bottom. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to save this with my, I usually just store it in my stamp case, but that does need to dry a little bit first. All right, so that's our background, our stack of books. I love it. And it seems like it's only leaning a little bit, so that's good. All right, let's do this. And then I wanna clean this off very quickly. So some people have asked me about my chamois. This is actually a half of a half. So when I got my chamois, I mean, it's pretty big. I had cut it in half originally. So it was like this big. So there's like a whole nother part over here that has not even seen ink ever. Um, I don't know why, but I ended up cutting it in half because it fits better um, A in my hand. But then I got this cute little holder thing at the scrapbook convention and then it fits right there. You don't have to cut yours if you don't want, but the whole one I thought was a little too big. Seeing is clearly overrated, Penny. <laughs> All right, so we've got this here. Mm, I can't stand it. That's cute. All right, we're going to use glue there. And I can never tell. So this side, I think, is the top because it's like the bricks are poking up and the grout is down. So that's kind of, that's what I've been going with. I don't think it really matters though. I mean, is anybody going to be that picky? I don't think so. All right. Now I don't want to layer too much on here. So I'm going to glue this thing down flat and I am going to pop up the bird a little bit. Now, if you are noticing a color scheme here, 
yes, it was supposed to be Harry Potter. That's what made me think. When I saw these glasses on the birds, it made me think of Harry Potter. And that's why I thought a scarf was in here because I could have sworn that um, somebody has done something with a scarf, but they must have gotten it from somewhere else. Actually, I think we're gonna do this little hello and we'll stamp that in black. So where are my, all right, we gotta figure out which bird I want and I'm just gonna color it with regular markers. These are my retired markers. So I know I've got the Curry and the Mary Merlot. Um, but I think I kind of like this one because I am going to color the two colors. So we're going to use the Mary Merlot and the Curry. Ugh. I didn't know have a good place to put my retired markers, so I just shoved them in. These are the cases that the new markers came in. So just so you know, they do fit. They're a little, they're slightly different sizes. The new markers are a little bit bigger. Um, so mm, maybe we'll go with this one. Oh, but first, no, you know what? I want this one because I want both the colors and then we'll stamp the glasses on it later. All right, so we're just going to do, you would color with whatever markers you have. If you want to do blends, do blends. I'm only using the regular markers because I have them in these colors. Blends would be nice. Ooh, so my curry marker is getting a little bit gross or dry. That's fine. I've had this, I don't know how many years. All right, now let's do his glasses and I will do the versifying. Oh, these things are so cute. They make me laugh. All right, I have to drag this a little closer to my face. Just, can you stand it? <laughs> it's so funny. All right. I think it's funny anyway. <laughs> They're adorable. All right. Let that dry for a minute. And like I said, I stamped this on basic white thick. That is really thick. And we're going to do, this is just a scrap piece of white. I want to do a little greeting. I think I'm going to do this little hello, just because I like it. And it's just like a little, little something. Boop. And this one will go with the Catherine Pooler. Just because this ink, it dries quicker than the Versafine. And it does come off of the stamps. Quite nice. Off the rubber ones anyway. Not off of the photopolymer. All right, that's that. Oh man, this is just cute. Now I did get a little schmutz in the in the glasses there. Rose, this is what you were fussy cutting? Were you getting ready for bingo? Because you don't know what we're gonna what she's gonna have for the make and take. So our friend Jeanette's having a bingo, which I can't go to um, because I've got something else, but Rose is gonna play my cards for me because she's a doll. All right, and I want to have this kind of like here. Actually, let's do this. And I'm not sure. I think I'm going to come out it like this and have this guy like over top. So I'm not going to trim the excess off yet. All right. So it should be dry enough. Let's, let's give this a whirl. Oh, Rose. And then for some cards. Yeah. These are just so cute. And I mean, they're easy enough to cut out. I don't feel like we have to have dies or punches for every single thing. You know, it gets a little overwhelming and not necessary. But these guys, so cute. I am going to have to find, figure out what people were using for a scarf. There, Maybe there's one in another set that I just can't think of. Because it seemed like it went around 
one of the other sideways birds perfectly. Let me get this out of here. Like it went around maybe this one or this one pretty perfectly. So if anybody really has an idea, let me know. Oh, so cute. Oh, you know what? Let's give his little beak. Um, let's just make it the curry. All right. Mm, cute, cute, cute. All right, so he's going to be popped up. And yeah, I think I'll put that right there. And then his body will cover up where that hello is going in. Oh, so cute. Let me pull that out just a little bit. Oops. Okay. Mm. And then we'll use a couple. I've got the last little bits of a pack. I need a couple more. But cute little note card. So, you know, sometimes you get your sets like out of order. You know, you'll use more cards or more envelopes. So this one is if you have an extra envelope, then you can make your own card to fit. Oops, I didn't mean to grab two of these. And I did want to put a couple of dots on here. I was thinking um, black dots because I know I've got some and I thought it would look good. All right, let's pop that guy right there. Oh my God, oh, so cute. And actually, let me put a little glue right under here and hold that for a minute. Cute, cute, cute. All right, and then find my black dots. We had, you know what? I don't think these are current, but we have those other ones that have a higher profile. What are they called? Classic, these ones. I'm just gonna go ahead and use these just because I would rather use these up. Um, and I kind of like them better. Because those other ones, they might be the same height, but I just like these are rounded. Cute, 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 cute. All right. And normally I would put glue under here, but clearly forgot that. But I love it. A little stack of books. Mm. Now, I could add some Wink Stella. I don't know if I want to put it on his face. So maybe just his wings and body. Just to give it a little extra, a little extra shimmy shimmy. Mm, cute. All right, now the big test. Is it going to be too? Nope, fits perfectly. Bam. All right, I love it. Now, if you're new, um, it always takes me a couple days and I get all the measurements and I take a picture of the individual cards and I have that updated on my blog. Um, probably, I'll probably do that Saturday. Um, so don't worry if you like miss the measurements. All right. Now the next one. So we use the envelope in that one. Now we're going to use the card. All right. And this, so they are thick. They are the basic weight thick. Oh, thanks you guys. I do want to be careful folding it so that it doesn't crack because they don't really score it a lot. And that looks good. And this one, when I first pulled it out of the pack, it was kind of ratty. Like, I don't know, I guess it got caught up in the machine or something. So I took a sanding block that I've had forever and I just rubbed it until that extra came off. But we're going to put that on the back side just to avoid anything. Now this one, I'm definitely going to, um, I'm going to stamp directly on the note card and then we'll add um, our two birds. And I think I want these two. I definitely want a smaller one and then like a bigger one. All right, let's just cut these too. 
these guys, ugh. Any little critter. Now, if you don't have these birds, you use ladybugs, you use dragonflies, you use owls, like whatever you have. So, um, all right. So we're going to make this card. Doot, doot, doot. I want to stamp the leaves and the stumps or the branches, whatever this is. We're going to go in early espresso. And I'm going to come in from the sides. So they're going to be like multi-level branches. Ooh, look at that. So that came from my ick. All right. Now I don't want this one too high because I have to have a, enough room for a bird. So let's see. Our bird's going to be like here. And actually this one is going to be here. So this can be like right here. So you see how I very technically figure out where to put it. Now this one didn't ink good or stamp good. Let me uh, get this closer to my face and hopefully ish. All right, good enough. I'm just gonna color it anyway. All right, now leaves. Um, I am going to stamp these. I guess we can do them in green. It's not quite fall yet, but I would be all about stamping them in browns or oranges. Let's go with Old Olive, Old Faithful. And I'm just going to add, um, you know what? I don't even have to add these, but let's do a couple. All right. Do there. And I guess we just put these wherever. And then we're going to have one bird here and one there. <gasps> I must have caught that with the edge of my block. Mm. All right. Well, that is going to have to get covered up somehow. All right. Now, again, we're going to do um, regular markers. I would not use Stampin' Blends or any kind of alcohol marker on this because it's going to bleed through, you know, no matter what kind of paper you have, your alcohol markers. Oh yeah, Gail, you're right. I could do another leaf up there. Why not? It could be coming from a branch above. See you guys. That's good. All right, let's do that there. And now I feel like I want one there too. All right, good. Good idea. I think maybe I re-inked my pads too recently and forgot. Um, all right. So let's do... Now I'm not going to color all the leaves. So the tip of my marker is not that great because these are the ratty style. But that is working out because see how that looks like kind of sketchy? So I want that. If you want to color yours totally in, then then do that. But I like this because it looks like there's some, like it's variegated or something. You know, it looks more natural, I think, not just a solid leaf because we know that's not really how they look. You could have lighter colors, darker colors, but yeah, I like that. So the fact that my marker is uh, ruined is actually coming in handy. All right, and then um, I gotta fix that. So I'm gonna do a little bit of brown, but I'm gonna go a lighter, I'm gonna go with whatever, soft suede. All right, and again, this one is, the tips are jacked up. I might not even have to save these. I really don't use my markers a lot, but this is disappointing that I really didn't get my money's worth out of them. So that means the new ones that I just got that are a thousand times better, I definitely have to start using more. But, all right, I like that. So we still have the same kind of not solid image. Die, am I cropping Saturday? No, not this Saturday. Um, I've got something going on. I'm going on the 20th to Denise's to at the Elks Lodge. So yeah, I thought I, um, 
already we talked about that, but maybe not. So yeah, not this Saturday, but the 20th, definitely. Okay, now let's figure out some colors for these guys. And I'm thinking, mm, since I have these old markers out, let's use them. I like Cajun Craze Orange. We'll do the Curry. And Red. Rich Razzleberry. No, I think we're going to stick with these. So I am kind of going to get some folly colors in here. Let's do Cajun Craze. Oh, you know what? I need, the whole point of this was we use the card on this one and then we're going to make our own envelope. I need Parakeet Party because I, um, that's the paper that I cut. All right, we can still use, and that one I only have the blends. All right, it's going to work out. So that's that. We'll add some orange. Let me find parakeet. Lemon lime twist. Lemon lime twist. So these must be the parakeets. Oh, over here. Yep, parakeet, parakeet. All right. Shoo! I'm glad I figured that out. And I want this. Um, let's do this. Like dark, dark, dark. And then light, light, light. And remember, I am cutting this out. So the fact that I got a little whoopsie there doesn't matter. I will right, we'll do orange. They can both have orange beaks. And then actually, I want to bring in some more of the parakeet right here, too. Now, I know birds don't really look like this. Um, well, some of the, I guess the toucans or something. I know they're different birds, but I don't worry about that if it's not like the right color. I just color them to match whatever my project is. I don't care about reality. All right. So orange. And I could do some red. Um, let's see how this goes. This, this might be a bad idea. I think I want to do red and then some orange. Pumpkin pie. And these don't really blend because these are not blendies. Um, but I don't mind because you can color, keep coloring it. And then that line doesn't look as bad. Once you start pilling up your paper, that's time to stop. All right. I kind of like that. And then let's go like this way. And then pumpkin pie. And I'm going to go right over his eyeball. All right, this one, I like this bottom half better, but I like it good enough. That's pretty good. Like you can't even tell that I think that's a little harsh line. So hmm, I like that. And then let's do this guy. Um, let's do another two-tone. Let's do the pumpkin pie here, and then we'll come in with the curry. And again, let's really hit that line hard to try to force it to blend. And it's working well enough. Good. Definitely want thick paper if you're going to do this. So see, this yellow kind of looks like doo-doo color in the, uh, in the screen, but it looks okay in real life, I swear. <laughs> All right, let's cut these guys out. And then we're going to make our envelope. So again, if you don't have one, um, we want a, we're going to use our envelope punch board, which if you don't have one, you can still get them at, um, off Amazon. You can get them at Michael's. I've seen them. We are memory keepers is the ones that make them. They made the one for Stampin' Up! and just had our label on it. So it doesn't, it's not any different. I feel like I'm going to cut this little foot off. Um, so get one 
you can use your coupon at Michael's or Joann's. Oh, I like it. I love it. And then let's come in here and cut this one. And if I remember correctly, and I'll show it when we get there, but you need a piece of paper that is seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter to make a three, an envelope for a three and a half by five card. And you can use cardstock or designer paper. I am actually going to be using the stargazing paper because one of the sides had a really um, pretty print in the parakeet and I liked it. So the back side, which will be the inside of our envelope, does have some of the outer space, but we're just going to ignore it. It can be anything. They don't know it's outer space. All right. Mm, I like it. Okay. Now let's do, now these we can definitely pop up. Oh, this is, I love it. Where'd my dimensionals go? Here we go. We're popping both of these guys up. And I'm not adding any ribbon on this. Um, just because it's, you know, like a no layer card, but you could wrap some around. I just want to have them so their feet are on the, on the branch there. And actually I'm going to go in with glue. How about that? Hey, Vicki from Australia. Awesome. I'm going to put a little bit of glue under each foot. So his feet are down, but his body is popped up. And if you don't have glue, just use like a mini um, dimension, not dimensional, mini glue dot, like the little ones that come from the paper pumpkin kit. So we want feet on the ground and then body popped up. Mm, I like it. All right. This batch of dimensionals is very sticky. All right. And I'm just kind of going like trying to even out for placement. And I will stamp directly on this for my greeting, but I do want to get back in here and uh, see if I can get these feet to stick down. All right, let's put, let's hold it, smash it. All right. Now this one, I could do that little hello again as well. I was thinking I might use some from the layered leaves set, which I got, and I haven't used this yet because I haven't used it much. I used the greeting once, one of the greetings. Um, but the punch that goes with it is not available until October 2nd. So I don't really want to do anything until I can, until we can get that punch. All right. Hmm. I like it. Who am I kidding? I love it. All right. Let's do, I like hello. Well, let's see where we're going to fit that. We might have to go back with the I don't want that up there. I don't want it like right down at the bottom. Hmm. We're going to have to go back to the other one because I want something just teeny tiny. And actually, let's do just a note this time. Or no, let's stick with hello. I can put that right there and it's kind of sneaking in. All right. And we're going to bring back early espresso. All right, and hope that I got this straight. How about that? Straight enough. Mm, I love it. Oh, by the way, Sue, so I had my Poppy Parade ink pad has always been one of those that's like not great. I've had to replace it twice because it gets all like funky. Let me get around to that one. Like it would get like um, a jelly-ish kind of, you know, coating. It's still looking a little bit weird. Oh, I think I roughed it up when I was re-inking it. So Sue told me, put this under the faucet and rinse it out completely and then refill it. So I did that. And actually, let's take a stamp and see uh, how this is going to go. All right, that's stamping well. 
it had like sticky bits on it. So I did, I washed it completely. It never got completely clear. So see this light bit, that's as like the color that it was. Like it was really stained from the poppy ink. Um, but if it didn't work, I was just going to be throwing it out because this is one I had so many problems with it. Like really, this is like my third ink pad, I think. When they announced the color change, I was like, please, please let me Poppy Parade be gone. Let Poppy Parade be gone. Because I was, I wanted a new color. I was sick of it. But Sue, I just want to let you know that I think that worked. So thank you. You saved me. Um, Cause I was just going to throw it out. All right. I don't like to mess with it too much. Okay. So here's our cute card. Now we need a, an envelope since we used the envelope on the first one. So envelope punch board. So see this paper? I love it. And that's got just enough of the parakeet that I think it looks good together. So the back side, that's going to be on the inside. Um, so we go over here. So we want a three and a half by five card. And I know you can't read this. So we need seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And our score mark is at three and one eighth. So I'm just going to go over this part quick three and an eighth over here and then score. So we're, and make a little punch. So we're actually scoring right in this track. All right. So score punch, then we turn it. No more measuring. We turn this and this score line that we have there, you can see it. We want it to line up with that little tick right there, that little tippy top. So let me get this. And then we just go same score punch turn, line up that score line with our little marker thing. I don't even know what you call that thing that's sticking out. Punch and then turn and line up again for our last one. And I have to do this in the light myself, um, especially if I'm using like dark color cardstock. It's just hard to see the lines. Oh, all right. So we've got our envelope and then we're just going to fold and I still fold gently and then take my bone folder. I'm always worried about cracking the paper. So I just try to be nice to it and then smash it down. All right. And now you see this purple is going to be on the inside. No one is going to see. All right. So let's add a little bit of glue. And I can hear Dave just got home. I don't know where he ran off to. Add glue, and I'm going to hold it. Now, if you don't like this little corner hanging up, you could have cut that off if you want before you glue it down. It doesn't even bother me. I never think of it. You fold yours so you can see the score line better when matching it up. Yeah, that. so you score it and then fold it, and then you can see. All right, and then let's put this in here fits perfectly. Nice. Now I want to bring the other one back in because this is going to be important for our last project. So this is the envelope that comes with the note cards and envelopes. So let's put this in. And then this is the envelope from the punch board. They're both for three and a half by five cards. Well, they're not exactly the same size. So the envelope that you would make for yourself is a wee bit bigger, like a quarter inch or so. All right. So that'll be important later. Um, if you're just using this and going to mail it or send it, you know, give it to somebody, it doesn't matter. Um, but I'm trying to make a little box. that's going to hold all these. So I had to adjust some measurements so it'll hold the bigger ones. All right. So that is uh, number two. So number three, I made, let's see, I made this card for a craft roulette challenge um, a week or so ago. This is a wee tiny little circle card. It's actually, uh, this is the largest size die from the stylish shapes dies. I think it's like three inches. Yep. Three inches. So I had planned to make this a little circle easel card and I didn't have time. So I just did a plain one. And then Penny was like, Ooh, your next thing. And I was like, you know, I didn't say it, but I was like, yep, I was thinking that anyway. So, you know, an easel card. Um, and you know, I should have had one for an example. Um, so we're just gonna have to go through this. We actually have to have another little piece that it'll pop up. 
So what we need, three Tahitian tied circles, all the same size, okay? Um, the one is going to go this way, all right? So we're going to have our card base, yep. And then we've got the next size down. And these came from my regular layering circles, which we don't have. So any circle that will fit, you know, that's like one size down. I've got one piece of the DSP. And this is last year's designer paper. But that's all I had in this color. Um, so we're going to glue that on one. On what's going to be like our very front. All right. And I'm not worried about the lines being straight up or down. I think I'm going to want them at a jaunty angle. So I think I'll probably keep it like that twisted. All right. So the two pieces that are going to make like this part, we're going to have, um, I have to put this on first to our inside just because of where the scoring is going to line up. So I'm going to flip that upside down and hold this. So let me show you better. With this, the front circle is, I left it plain. There's no scoring. The back is where I'm scoring it so we can actually open it. So I'm going to do the same thing on this piece. All right. And then this piece is actually going to get folded in half. So let me just do this by hand. And you know what? I need my, let's do, let's get this going a little bit with my bone folder. Get this like a taco kind of, and then flat. All right. And I hope, yeah, I think that's right. Yep, it's going to go like this. This is going to get glued onto the back of here so it will stand up. All right. I need to flip this over and make this little score mark. Oh. Okay, so I want to do it on the back, and I'm just picking a spot. So remember, this is going to be on the inside, but I do need to score it on both, both ways. So I just picked two lines over, I think. Let's hold this up. Nope, three lines. So at the three-eighths mark, mark, and just be very careful, but I am pressing down on this kind of hard. All right, so we've got our score mark, 3 eighths inch. Now, I'm going to flip this over and line this line up with the score line, the marks again. And I'm going to go at it from the other side. And I'm pushing it all the way up in the corner. So it's touching this and it's touching this. So that's going to help it not move and make sure we get it in the right spot. Okay. I think that's that's gonna do it so we want this to bend backwards and I'm gonna have to add a little bit more glue and I had to do this for the last time too so don't worry so let's squeeze and hold this I'm trying to think do I have an easel card laying around um, I'm looking I can't see any because that would really give you a better idea. Ooh, I must have brown ink on my hands. Gross. All right, let me wipe this off real quick. For the concept. All right. Fold, and I'm going to give this a little burnish. All right, so our piece... We need to glue this on the bottom. So I'm going to put glue here and put this here. This will be the front of our card. And then this will get glued just to the tippy top. All right. And that actually has to be straight. So let me just do that first. Eyeballing, eyeballing. That looks like it's straight. Straight. Put glue all over this little tab. It's just a teeny tiny little tab. That's all you really need. All right, I'm just lining these up. 
and I do have to squeeze this together. So we've got our fold facing down. And again, this is a circle easel card. There might be um, somebody that does it a little bit better, but I didn't think this was that hard. So this is going to bend this way. Okay. Actually, let's look at it this. So we've got our, the back of our card is our fold. So this is going to come up and that's our easel. So we're, that's why we attach the front just to this bottom. See, does that make more sense? All right. And the fact that this did not fold nice doesn't matter because it's getting covered up anyway. And then adding this whole extra circle layer is going to make this just even more sturdy. All right. Now I can just squeeze this all in place. Tap, 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 press, hold, hold with my fingers. And then we'll have our, let's hold it for just a more, one more minute. Okay. All right. Now let's look at it from the side. So we'll see that zoop, it's going to open like that. Oops. There we go. Zoop. And we're going to have to stick something right here. That'll be our stopper. Like you normally get in an easel card. Now the fact that this sticks up a little bit, that's fine. Think of it as like, you know, something on your desk that sits up like a calendar or something. So mm, I love it. All right. Now I want this. Uh, I got to color him in. And again, so we're using Tahitian Tide. And yep, color with blends. Yep, mix size down. And then whatever little, again, we're going to have to go to a tiny little greeting. I think we're going to go back to hello. <laughs> Maybe that'll be like all the greetings tonight will be hello. All right. Is this Tahitian? Yep. Tahitian Tide and Tahitian Tide. One of, I got one set originally that was, um, the dark was dried up. All right. So let's do, um, this, let's do this guy right here. All right. And we're going to do all blue. He's going to be all blue. So we'll do Tahitian. And what colors are these? Coastal Cabana. Hmm. Okay. That's going to work. I don't know. These are old, um, but I'm going to use them. All right. So dark Tahitian Tide. And I want it to be mostly the T Tahitian since that's our card base. So let's go like that. And again, you know, I'm not the, uh, the greatest at the alcohol marker coloring. That scales department. I just usually try to like make some shadows or differences, not necessarily shadows. And I'm going to leave the beak alone so I can come back and add that. I think this one's going to get a, a yellow beak. All right. And then this might be terrible colors. Let's see. Nah, not bad. So coastal cabana, any lighter shade would work. And even like green or yellow or something completely different. I just wanted this to be all blue. All right, that's that. And then let's come in with our doot, 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 little yellow guy and we'll cut him out. And we're going to pop him up and do a little greeting and add some gems. But I love this teeny weeny little circle card. And it really just takes an extra, um, one extra circle layer to make it an easel card. Oh, Vicki, you're right. They would make nice wedding um, dinner cards, like place settings. Depending how many you had to make, though. I wouldn't want to make 180 of these, but a small number. And of course, if you had help, you know, that matters. But if you had to do this all yourself, 
And actually, if you had something uh, like what would cut out like a cricket or something or a silhouette that you could maybe like not die cut them and just have it cut all the circles out for you like assembly line. That would be good. Mm, this is adorable. All right. I feel like I need another little circle there just to pop it up. Um, but we're going to do the greeting and pop the greeting up. I feel like I need something there, but I'm going to leave it off for now. We're going to pop him up. just because I want to get to this box. Oh, and this one, I was trying to think. So the mini envelopes that we have, yes, they would fit this. So this is a three inch circle. So, you know, we sell the little um, square envelopes that are actually like three and an eighth by three and an eighth. So that fits this. And that, my stash of those is out in the hall. I didn't think to grab one, but trust me, it'll work. All right, this is going to go like this. I might come back in later and add the tree stump. But I kind of like it just off to the greeting. So I wanted, I mean, this has to be like a tiny little thing. So let's go back to hello. So we're going to stamp. And this is nice and thick too. And let's grab Tahitian Tide. And this is going to be a longer, I'm actually going to layer this twice because I want this to be sturdy enough to hold this little card up. So let's cu cut that and glue it. And then I'm just going to trim it again to double layer that. So thick cardstock, did it twice. And then cut that. Mmm, cute, cute, cute. And then let's cut this. We can trim it down a tiny bit. so cute it does need to get popped up all right because it's got to like catch so our regular dimensionals yeah this will fit i'm gonna do one two and that will go i like to put it about like in the third like the bottom third that's cute all right that should hold if we weren't, if I wasn't sure, then I would double these up, like make two layers of dimensionals. But I think this is going to work. Actually, I usually put it like this, but that doesn't leave enough room to write your message. So we're going to go like with this. Oh, so cute. So that's going to sit up on the table like that. We do need to add some gems. Um, actually, let's use some of these blue ones. They're balmy blue, but I think once we put them on here, they're going to look fine. My other choice would probably be iridescent rhinestones, but let's just double check. I think these blues are pretty, pretty good. Yeah, that's going to work. Nice. All right, and then we'll do a big one here and then a little one. And the fact that these are so lumpy and dimensional doesn't matter because you're not going to mail a three by three card anyway. Actually, I say you shouldn't mail it. They're not mailable. Whoever gets it will have to pay extra postage. That's even if they do get it. Ooh, I like it. So we just pop up and then I got to get a good picture of this. Yeah, Penny, you're right. Rose could help anybody cut them for a, a big wedding. And then this is the side view. There we go. So we see that easel. Mm, stinking cute. And could go back and add some, um, what's it? Winkastella. All right, let me put this lid on that. Now we've got these cards that are all different sizes. And I want to make a box for them. And going along with the book theme from our 
first project, oh, I got to get my glue pen in here so it doesn't seize up on me. We're going to make a book box. Now I made these like two years ago. So I had to go back to those measurements and um, change them up a little. Man, this thing, I'm going to have to fight with this. Uh, now the reason I had to change them up is I originally made it for, to fit the note cards and envelopes that come straight out of the packet. And since the envelope that we made is a little bit bigger, I had to adjust my measurements. All right. So again, these measurements will all be on my blog. I just need a couple days. So we're going to make, and here's one, let me show you. This is the one that I made two years ago that held that holds um, this size, the regular size. And it's actually bigger. You know what? I could have done the same exact size. I didn't realize, I thought it was a tighter fit. Um, but this book box, I haven't opened this since I made it. So it's a box. So see this, we've got a box and then our book cover like just folds over. And then if it's sitting up, it looks like a book. I can't stand it. I love it so much. All right. And I'm glad I do have some of this snowflake um, splendor ribbon. I thought I had the white glittered, which is still available. And I ran out and I forgot to put it on my order. All right. So what we need, let's start with our box first. And I am going to have to bring in some of my Mary Merlot, um, you know, retired designer paper because I don't have the cherry cobbler, but let's do our box first. So we want a piece that is eight and a half by 10. All right. And this is going to make a box that is, um, just the right size, but let me at least tell you this, our finished size is going to be four and a half by six by one. So one inch sides. So eight and a half by 10, we're going to score at one and two inches on all four sides. All right. And so this is a box with no lids. So think of it as just a one piece, like just the bottom. So one and two turn one. Oops. One and two. Don't jump the track. Turn one and two, turn and one and two. Now assembling this box, Ugh. Rose actually taught me how to make this one. Um, so these side pieces are going to get folded. It kind of makes the box a little bit sturdier, stronger anyway. Um, so this side and this side, I want to trim this at the tiniest angle, like all the way up to that second score line. So do you see how much of a curve you could cut it straight on the line, but a tiny, tiny little angle makes it fold up better. All right. And I'm going to flip this around and do the same thing. So teeny tiny angle. Teeny tiny angle. All right, so that's going to get folded up. Now we need um, these are going to be our like strips that are going to fold in. So let's do this angle, angle, very slight angle here. All right, so we have this tab and then same thing here. We'll do angle, angle very slight angle and then same thing over here oh whoops this way angle this way and this way and then slight right here all right so we've got this tab and i think i have a better picture of this final pattern um, that i will post to my new post also all right, and then angle this, angle that, and slight angle. All right, so all this throw away. So 
So now we have this. So my score lines, I like to fold down. So these tabs at the end of it, I leave this whole strip. You can cut the tops off if you want. Um, I just leave them. I don't fold them though. So let's just fold all this and bring the bone folder in. This we want to fold and then fold. Oh, you know what? I forgot to fold this one. Okay. Fold, fold, fold. Fold at that line. And then this middle one, just fold the one. And then the fourth side, we've got our tabs in already. So let's fold here and here. All right, so box assembly, we need these tabs. Let's fold these out a little bit just so we can see better. So these tabs we're gonna glue and pull this side up and they're gonna stick down right like that. Let's do this, flip these all out. So let's go back to our glue. And I am pretty generous with the glue. And we just want to come up so it's going to make a nice corner. So at this point, these should be um, pretty, yeah, these should be a little straight. Actually, you know what? Ooh, I did angle that a tiny little bit. So, all right, that works. If we pull these in too much, um, the box will be not the right shape. So actually, let's do it this way. Just set it up so that the, everything is upright. So see that tiny little angle? That's fine. That's what we want. All right. And then let's glue these two on, these two tabs. If you don't angle the tabs, it makes it easier to figure out like how far up you have to go but this is still a really good box. All right. And then this one's tricky, how you have to hold it and get our glue down here. And there we go. Okay, now we're gonna put glue on all of these outside flaps and they're gonna cover up these inside flaps and add more stability. So generous with the glue. I feel like I have to refill this some. Or if you're using tape, just a strong adhesive. And I'm just going to flip this over and hold everything in place. And then I want my, this bone folder. So you want something that you can get in these corners. So what I'm going to do, it's hard to see, but I'm going to flip this on its side and I'm going to take this corner and go in here and then go all the way back and forth and, and get in here. All right. And I'm really burnishing and pressing down in those corners because I want this side to be nice and tight. All right. Now I know you can't really tell any difference, but um, I feel like there's a difference. <laughs> But no, you just want to get it like really as flat as you can. And yeah, I really do need to uh, refill this glue and maybe let's take this down here a little bit. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, that's working better. All right, so glue, and we're going to fold down. And just hold it in place for a minute. Amy, where did I get this bone folder? Amazon. It is called, um, I ripped the labels all off. I've had links. I can't remember the name. Um, ugh. I'll have to find it. But just Google Teflon bone folders. It comes in a set. So it came in the set of two. 
the tool that I'm using. Hey, Denise, this is that bone folder that I've had or that I got. Um, so I've, I've got to get the name for you guys, um, but I've had a link. It's on Amazon. It was like maybe $19 or maybe 30. I can't remember for both. It comes as a set craft something or other. Um, Di knows she's got it. Di, do you have your bone folder handy and does it have the sticker still on it? All right. And then let's put glue on here. Otherwise you guys, I'll just have to find the link and send it. I know I had a, um, I had like an Amazon link. Man, this glue doesn't want to come out tonight. Craft tea or something like that. I don't know. All right. Same thing. Squeeze. I love it too, Julie. I mean, I love any boxes, but the fact that this is going to look like a book, really cute. All right. So jamming this, not jamming, but really getting this chisel tip all the way in all those corners. Ugh. This is frustrating with the glue. I didn't think it was this low. And I don't want to use my um, Tombow glue because that just takes forever to dry. All right. One more. Maybe there's just like a lot of glue bits dried up in there. All right. It seems like it's going to be good for a minute. Okay. Fold down. Squeeze. Now let's take our bone folder again. And I'm going to go in the corners and all along this. And I'm also getting this very edge too. All right. I want it, everything nice and flat. Okay. So perfect box. Where's our cards? I'm um, just going to dump them all in here for now. So they will, there's that size, there's that size. And then these would be in their envelopes. So, mm. and then let's double check. Yep. Four and a half by six. All right. Now let's make our, our book part. So we need another piece of Mary Malow. And this one's going to be six and a half by ten and a half. And this is not going to be double layered. This is just going to be like a single piece that folds up. And then we're going to add layers. So six and a half by ten and a half. And we're going to score it at four and three quarters and five and three quarters. All right. So our box is one inch tall. That means we need a one inch spine on the side of our box. So that's where the four and three quarters, four and three quarters, and then five and three quarters. So this is an inch. All right. Now, how did I get this number? Um, I'll just tell you. Let me get something to draw. So our box is six by four and a half. All right. Well, I want it to fit in our book cover and this is not to scale, obviously. So this will be our book cover. Just so you know, if you're making your own later. All right. And these are our score lines. Um, actually I want this score line. It's going to be butted up against, we want our box to be right up against this score line. All right. So that's four and a half. I want a quarter inch difference. So quarter inch here and here. So that's six and then a half. So that's how we get our six and a half. And then this four and a half, no gap here because we're going to butt this right up against the seam. So I want a quarter inch here. So that's how I get four and three quarters. Um, just so hopefully that will make some sense. All right, let's fold this and burnish. And it's going to make sense right now, actually. 
All right, so here's our book cover, all right? Just a onesie, four and three quarters on both sides and our one, one inch gap. So I want my box to come in and it's gonna get glued right up against this score line. And then we'll have a quarter inch here, a quarter inch here, a quarter inch here. All right, and then this will be able to close like that. So do you see those, that quarter inches? Now you can see it It'll here, here, and on that. So just three sides. So this, um, I am going to actually, you know what? Let's use some of this tape. All right. And then we will use some combo just because I don't feel like messing with that. All right. And then it's not going to hurt just to put some right along this edge. Because actually this can sit here for a minute. Okay. So I want this edge to go to the right side of this score line. I don't want it touching it because that will impede. Oh, look at that. That'll impede it opening properly. All right, so I just got that gross glue all over my fingers. Jeez. All right, I really need an alcohol wipe. All right, let's flip this over. And I'm going to line this up. And I am trying to just make it even as far as top and bottom. But we're going to get what we get. All right. Actually, that looks pretty good. Now I'll take this again, bone folder, and I'll just go all in and score this down. And... I'm going to have to take something to this later because I got glue, wouldn't you know it, right at the tippy top of that. So annoying. I guess I have to take my glue eraser or something. Ugh. But like all our stuff is going to fit in here and then we're going to shut our book. Now we're not ready to shut it yet. I need a piece of... Get this glue off of me. So I want to make a book spine kind of. So I've got a piece of black that should be around here somewhere. Two inches. There we go. Two inches by six and a half. So remember our book is six and a half tall. So I want a one inch cover here and then just come in, you know, a half inch on each side. Now this one, I'm going to score at an eighth of an inch on across the whole thing. You guys know how sticky this, this glue is. Yeah, an alcohol drink for sure. God knows what would happen. All right, so I'm going to take this and score at every eighth inch. And this is just going to make it look like an old-timey book spine. And it's also going to let it move a little bit. So I don't want to glue this like completely flat up against the spine because we are going to move it. So I'm just going to glue it on the sides. There we go. And I'm not going to fold and burnish everything either. Let's sit this up like this. Actually, let's put some things here to maybe hold it in place a little bit. So I want to kind of wrap this. So actually, what's one inch or a half inch? Half inch looks like maybe about here. Maybe three down. So I just want to fold these. Get that going. Yeah, I probably could have gone one more. So I'm going to glue it on the sides and then leave this so it can move. And this is hard to see, A, on black cardstock where this score line is. So I'm just having to go slow and like pinch it. 
I think I got that right. All right, I'm just going to give this a quick little burnish and then hold this up for sizing. Yeah. And then fold this one. I feel like I'm picking the wrong one. One, two, three. Oop, let's try this. And if you wanted to leave this part out, you totally could. All right, I feel like I got one too many or one not enough. So I didn't do this spine cover treatment on my first one or actually any of the other ones that I made. I just thought it would be cute. I didn't realize it would be this much of a pain in the butt. But black cardstock scoring equals hard to see. All right. This is going to be good enough. All right. So we've got this that's going to fit. Yeah, perfect. So I only want to put glue on these side bits. And I want to leave that center free so it can move around. All right, let's just do the one side at a time. And there, just pressing that into place. And actually, let's put it on the ground or on the table. Now I can really press it down from the inside. Hmm, I like it. So that's going to fold over. And now I can go and add the glue on this side. So you see, just like a regular spine, I just want it attached on the, the front and back. Hold this for a minute and then you'll see what I mean. So as we open it, if I had glued this completely, even as we open it, see how it wants to bend up a little bit there? I mean, that's just normal. Actually, you can't see that. Here you can. See that tiny little bend? Like that's just the nature of the beast. So when it's flat, it's, you know, flush when it's closed, I should say. When we open it, it's just like a book. So let's look at it this way. I think you can see that gap. That happens when we open it. But I love it. All right, so there's our book. Um, now I wanted to add ribbon first. And you know what? I was going to color this, but I decided just now, nope, not going to do it. Um, we will use... some gingham oh no 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 we will use some black straight black ribbon uh, because yeah all right we're gonna do this and i need some score tape and i'm gonna do i you i like to use fabri-tac with the ribbon too so we need a little bit of score tape and i'm just eyeballing like halfway, what is the front? Now, if you don't want a ribbon closure, that's fine. It's just, this isn't gonna stay, it's gonna stay like this, see, by itself. So I like the ribbon. And then let's just do that so I can eyeball the same-ish over here. Actually, let me rip that off a little bit. Okay. Front cover, let's do that one first. And then I have to cut my layers. Um, so, peel this up. Add some Fabri-Tac. If you have Fabri-Fix, oh my God, I can't believe that um, whole thing came off. All right, shoo, just the nozzle. All right, let's squeeze some of this. And then, and then. I want the scallop side down just because this really has a strong smell. It's like a solvent. Um, so maybe better ventilation. And then I'm just going to pull off what I think is enough to make a bow. And then measure so we have the same amount. Okay. 
And this is just retired black ribbon, black basic scallops, edge, something or other. Whichever. All right. And then we'll do the same thing here. Peel this up, throw some fabric tack on it. And then add our ribbon. So I didn't cut this, um, my layers ahead of time because, ugh, this is stringy. I didn't know how far in I was going to want the, the layers to go. Like if I was going to want to cover that spine or not. All right, let's do scallops down. And that looks about even, right? All right, so I have to lay this. I have to keep this up like that because that glue is all in the way. So let's get this measured. So the part that is just the Merry Merlot or, you know, i.e. cranberry crisp or cherry cobbler, four and a quarter by six and a half. So let's do a quarter inch down. So that'll be four by six and a quarter. I'm gonna cut two pieces of black four by six and a quarter, four by six and a quarter. And I am going to write this down six and a quarter by four and by four. And then we're going to cut our designer paper. because I like this plaid pattern. We're going to cut that down another quarter inch. So four by six and a quarter. So we want three and three quarters by six. Oh, and it is six by six. <laughs> so we just have to cut it at four, three and three quarters. All right. And then this, we're going to tape on. This part is actually going to go pretty quick. So we're going to do our layering. Yeah, I love all kinds of boxes, but I really love these. And I like, you know, you can make it whatever size you need. So if you made a whole set of cards that were different size envelopes, you could totally make a box, a book box to fit, fix or to bleh, fit that. All right, fast fuse. And then I'm going to glue this straight down to the tops and bottoms of my boxes. I think I popped it up on the one that I made with the whale. Um, but this one I think is going to go quite nice, just flat down. Now, if I wasn't trying to use this um, fast fuse up, I would definitely use my glue that I need to refill and put this pin back in so it doesn't mm. see the other one the barely art glue I could leave that open for quite a while and not have to worry about this but it may be just because it's it needs a refill you know all right let's do one more down here And then I'm going to carefully, you know what, I have to do the back one first because then I can sit it. Oh, here we go. Perfect. 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 So let's flip that over again, press down, let's put our cards in. All of our cards flip this over mm, I love it and I had one more bird cut out or stamped um, but I'm not really sure what I'll put on this so this will probably be a surprise when I go to post these pictures all right let's do this Sure, that's all lined up. Oh man, love it. Okay, and then I'll flip that. Press, press, press. Perfect. 
and then we can tie this in a bow. And I think I normally tie a knot first, but I'm just going to tie it because I do have to take this apart again for pictures. But here's our book box. Isn't that cute? And then here's my idea was have another little guy down here. Actually, I'm going to have to go back in here and add some more glue to that spine. But I like that making a faux spine. I love it. All right, so more pictures later. By the way, Penny, oh, your son said um, Texas is winning the the football game. I guess I don't know what football game that is. So I didn't know it was that season again. Funny. All right. Yeah, Gail, it does involve math. <laughs> hey, Gloria. Um, Bows, I don't know how that got in my comment. Oh, I'll have to go back and look. Good for putting keepsakes in. Yep, cards and a nice gift box that can be used after you give the gift. Yeah, that's what I always thought about this kind of box. was, And it could be like a trinket box, you know, something. You're right, that they could hold all their, their treasures. So, yeah, Karen, I will link to, um, I did two other videos and had blog posts with different sizes. I did two that were like square book boxes and another one. Um, I made with a whole sheet of paper, a full sheet of paper, bigger. Actually, there's three then or no two. So I will link those also. Cause I think those were better videos. <laughs> Actually, nothing went wrong as far as I know. Um, but so thanks you guys for hanging out. And, um, yeah, when I update pictures, you'll see how I finish it, but I'm going to put that bird on it. And I don't know if I will put a greeting or anything on it. Cause I don't know what, um, who I'm going to give it to new comments. So thank you guys. Um, next week, one thing I know I'm going to show you is how to deal with unmounted stamps. I just bought some from a different company because they were like pool related, like playing pool. Um, and Stampin' Up's never had anything like that, but they are just flat rubber. There's no cushion on them at all. And I have stuff. Um, I'm going to show you how I mount them. And then I also have a stamp that um, I'll just pull one of mine. That's an old wooden stamp and I'll show you how to change those over. Um, and then we'll do some stamping, but I want to definitely show you, uh, how to deal with those. Okay. And it's good for, if you're trying to unmount things, if you're looking for more space in your craft room and you want to get away from wood, um, or if you get these rubber stamps, that's just the rubber, like how do we deal with it? So thanks Gloria. I'm glad you stopped by too. Hi Anna. Thank you for being here. All right, you guys, thanks for hanging out again and good night and um, get crafty. All right. Thanks. Bye.